Flashback, New York City, 2003. Half a million people hit the street protesting the Iraq war. Uh, the decision of George Bush, the George Bush administration, President Bush, to take our people into war under the premise that there were weapons of mass destruction, that, that Saddam Hussein was a brutal dictator, killing his people with poisonous gas and other stuff but mostly that there were weapons of mass destruction. We had to be afraid that he was going to use those bombs against us. And everyone knew it was a lie. Not everyone, but most of people, most of the thinking people at the time knew millions of people hit the street and protested. So I want to talk about the, I want to talk about the one Tulsi Gabbard and why she needs to drop out of this goddamn race and support Bernie Sanders. Now, I know it's not popular, and she's, everybody has a right to, to, to go, but listen, listen, listen. The, 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 the bottom line is that Tulsi Gabbard has not uh, walked back her poor judgment in Iraq, in going into Iraq. That is poor judgment. Miss uh, Ms. Gabbard, who is running a campaign on anti-war, one would think that at least you would have the proper judgment to know when to go to when to go to war and when not to go to war. Now, again, it's not this is not a hit piece or a character assassination of Tulsi Gabbard. It's that if a candidate is basing almost one hundred percent of her campaign on her judgment and her service to country and her um, her presence in the Iraq War then we must look at that and say, okay, well, what was, what was her, what, what is her judgment? Was her judgment correct? But let's look a little more. Let's stroll down memory lane again. A half a million people on the streets in New York protesting. Millions of people in the street are protesting. And where is Tulsi Gabbard at the time? 2002. 2002, Tulsi Gabbard is the Hawaii House... Uh, uh, in the House of Representatives, very smart. 21 years old, she gets elected to the House of Representatives in Hawaii and serves for two full years, all the way to 2004. Wow, what a what a prodigy! What a prodigy uh, Tulsi Gabbard is. And at at one point, she at 2004, she decides to go to Iraq, right, to fight. Goes right into the right into the shit in 2004 and 2005 and served. And then went back in 2008 and 9 to Kuwait, right? While millions of people are in the street protesting and, and uh, are awakened to the fact that George Bush is lying, that the, the war was not over weapons of mass destruction, but it was over the military industrial complex's need to spend money and the, you know, the oil industry also backing that war. Millions of people knew it. It's not like it was, you know, I know a lot of politicians like to say, oh, I, I saw it, I said it, I, I didn't support the war, but millions of people didn't support the war. And that is, that is the fundamental problem here with Tulsi Gabbard. I was here, this is not my footage, but I was, um, I was definitely there, and I remember it, and people came together, and they... they, they they were in the streets, right? This is important, right? This is, a, this is an important, um, is, a, is an important matter of judgment. Nobody that I knew was saying, "Hey, gee, I think I want to go to war and fight in Iraq." I, I don't know. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody at all who who had that in their heart that George Bush and and Dick Cheney and the rest of the bad bunch wanted, you know, were correct, and that that we needed to 
take arms and go to Iraq and fight the Iraqi people. I don't know of anybody at all in my life that did that. Right. So. So that's so that's that's Tulsi Gabbard. So Tulsi Gabbard sat down with um, with um, what's his name Talib. Ta- I forget his name. Matt Tabe and Katie Halp- Halper of the Rolling Stone. Right now, look at the number of hits. Right, this was out in August twenty fourth. Right, and it has one hundred twenty seven, one hundred thirty seven views. Right now, one hundred thirty seven views for a presidential candidate. Right, who 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 did better than that? Let's look at Bernie Sanders. Right, on Joe Rogan, nine million six hundred thousand views. Hello, Bernie. How are you, Joe? Wonderful. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's exciting to have you here, man. And it's uh, obviously an, an exciting time for you. Um, you know, presidential campaign is up in full swing. Do you? Uh, wow, look at that. I know, you can you watch it on your own. Joe Rogan, 9,600,000 views. Tulsi Gabbard, 137. <laughs> I mean, it's just, come on. Come on. What are you doing? Are you, are you doing what you're supposed to do? See, the point is that if Tulsi Gabbard really, really cared about service of country, she would be serving the country by backing Bernie Sanders. That's what she should be doing. But listen, she, she is a good attack dog. Let's give her credit for her attack on Camilla Harris in the debates. You remember? After the debate, the last debate, you have this confrontation with Senator Harris, and you know it doesn't go so well for her. And within an hour after the debate, you have her campaign manager is saying you love Assad. There's the you know the the, the Russia bots thing yeah. is suddenly in the news again. Um, is this a new thing in your experience? Like, what what is where is this coming from? Is it the party that's doing this? I think I think it again. It's revealing about uh, how pathetic. Um, it is that that's all they can right. respond to when uh, really the issue that I was raising in that debate with Senator Harris was the record that she claims to be very proud of as Attorney General. Mm-hmm. A record that she claims is about being a champion for the people. This is what she's built her presidential campaign around, which is, I mean, it's a lie. When right. you look at that record and you look at how many people's lives have been ruined, how many people have suffered, how many families have been torn apart as a result of her as attorney general when in a position of power to help people, to change this incredibly broken criminal justice system. And instead she perpetuated all that is wrong with it in so many different ways. And this is the truth about her record uh, that she can't run away from. Uh, instead of responding to that and saying why she's so proud of this, uh, she responds with, with a smear campaign. So to me, this, this is a bigger issue that speaks to uh, what kind of leader she would be as president and frankly how dangerous uh, I believe that leadership would be for the people in this country. And the fact that people don't see through that, I mean, some do, but the fact that you can actually hear someone say that, it's such an obvious deflection. It's so obviously yeah. not responding to any of the content of what you said. And the fact that they aren't embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, it's such scary. And I think that the, the, the I, I agree. I think it is scary when you look at um, what a Harris presidency would be if this is what she's doing right now on the campaign trail in launching these, these smear attacks, uh, claiming that somehow I'm some kind of foreign agent for another country. Uh, I wear the uniform. I wear the cloth of this right. country. I've taken an oath to put my life on the line for this country that I love and for the people that I love. And I still serve in that Army National Guard today. Mm -hmm. I'm a sitting member of Congress. I'm running for president. And if she uh, responds to the truth about her record by questioning the loyalty to this country that I've put my life on the line for, how will she as president respond to people who are critical of her or her record or who protest certain policies that she is proposing. I mean, this is the United States of America. This this begs the question about freedom of speech and what kind of society uh, and what kind of freedoms uh, she would stand up for and protect. Wow, such a, such an articulate attack on someone else, an articulate um, assessment of someone else's judgment, which she's correct. Her judgment is correct on Camilla Harris. Camilla Harris is a corporatist who is in a, you know, the attorney general of California. She was very, very pro, uh, you know, 
pro-establishment. She locked people up, you know, locked people up for marijuana laws. Right, All the things that she said about Kamala Harris are correct, and it is a correct and necessary attack. However, what about your own judgment? That's what I'm, that's what I'm concerned with. That's what, that's what concerns me with Tulsi Gabbard. So let's look at, um, so that, that, was a pl- that was a big plus, right? She's, she, she looked pretty good there, right? She was, she's, fighting for, um, she's fighting for freedom and democracy, and she, she points out the flaws in a candidate and how horrible it would be if Camilla Harris was elected president. But let's listen to Tulsi Gabbard's judgment. Now, again, Tulsi Gabbard served in Iraq from 2004 and 2005. And then she went back for more in 2008 and 2009 to Kuwait. Now, I just, I just showed you. Millions of people were awake. Millions of people knew about Iraq. Millions of people were aware all over the world that, that George Bush was in the pocket of big oil and the military-industrial complex. And they were trying to take the oil from the control of the oil in Iraq and in Kuwait and in the Middle East, take it from Saddam Hussein, who broke some sort of back-end deal. Everybody knew it, except Tulsi Gabbard. And listen, in her own words. In our family, but it just wasn't something that I thought about. 9-11 happened, and I knew in a very deep way, somehow I wanted to be in a position to serve my country and to go after those who had attacked us on that day. Go after Okay, so she says that she says that 9-11, which was 2001, right, that, that she was going to go after those who had harmed, harmed us, right? And at the time, we didn't even know who did it. We didn't know that it was Saudi Arabia. Was it, was it, was it, it certainly wasn't Iraq, right? It wasn't Afghanistan. It was none of these things. Afghanistan gave, gave um, shelter to Osama bin Laden and refused to let us come in under the Taliban, refused to let us come in and get him. So that's why Afghanistan got theirs. But certainly Iraq had absolutely nothing to do with any of this. If anybody was the culprit, it was, it was Saudi Arabia. So she brings up in this discussion of war and her reasoning behind going to war, she first starts with 9-11 the al-Qaeda terrorists. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do that. I wanted to be able to continue my service to the people of my state, uh, the people of Hawaii, and eventually join the National Guard as a way that would allow me to do both, fulfill both of those missions of serving home and serving our country. Uh, And in 2004, as I was campaigning for re-election to my state house seat, our brigade combat team, the unit in the National Guard that uh, has close to 3,000 people was activated for an 18-month-long deployment to Iraq. And I was assigned to a headquarters medical unit at the time. Uh, My commander called me very shortly after that notice was put out and said, hey, guess what, Tulsi, you don't have to go. Congratulations, you get to stay home. And I, you know, I said, wait, what, what are you talking about? How is this possible? I just knew that there was no way that I could stay back home in beautiful Hawaii and just wave goodbye to my brothers and sisters in the, in the National Guard as bad judgment, right? That's in my view, in, the heart, in my heart of hearts, these are the people that, that, that allowed the Iraq war to happen by suiting up and booting up and, and, and waving your brave, you know, people goodbye and saying, I'm coming with you. These are the people that in my view, were the opposition at the time, right? Tulsi Gabbard was on the wrong side of history, is what I'm trying to say, right? As, as they want. Is she still on the wrong side of history? Well, we'll find out. Off to war, and so. Um, the, you got a deferral or something like that? No, there was the, the the job that I was trained for. Mm-hmm. There was someone who had already filled that slot. Oh, okay, all right. And so uh, my commander quickly learned that I would not take no for an answer. Uh, and pushed him, and there was another job in the field medical unit that was deploying um, that needed someone to fill it. And so I was able to fill that slot, went and got trained in a different job, uh, and ended up deploying. Okay. And you ended up uh, in in, uh, Anaconda, right? uh, uh, Yes, yes. Our our brigade was based out of, as you know, a camp called uh, LSA Anaconda, which is a logistical supply area. Anaconda is about 40 miles north of Baghdad. 
And we got there late 2004, early 2005, which was really the height of the war uh, at that time. All right, so she's there, she's in Iraq at the height of the war. And all the, all the protesters, millions of people at home were saying, don't do it. Don't do it. It's fake. But nonetheless, she's still there. How did you make that decision? What's in your mind? You, you claim to be, <clears throat> someone comes to me and says, I'm, I'm a great leader. I want to lead this nation. I want to lead, lead this nation. What, I wouldn't trust you with, to, with, to, to, get, you know, to park my car. If you had that kind of judgment, you got in a, you got on a plane and went to fight Iraq over what George Bush said. I wouldn't give you the credit. I wouldn't trust you with my car keys. Uh, where there were a lot of casualties, um, and that was serving in that medical unit. Something that had a deep impact on me on a daily basis. Where there's no running away from the the devastatingly high human cost of war. Right. So you had really two, two experiences that were very striking, the exposure to the high number of American casualties, yeah. but also there was the mission itself, which didn't seem to really fit with the you know, Aloha culture. and what. It's like, it's like someone tells you that heroin is a bad drug, right? And you know it's a bad drug, but you try it anyway. Because you think like, oh, no, 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 they got it wrong, right? You can, they got it wrong. No, it's not a bad drug. It's only bad for people who, are, who get addicted to things. Me, I don't get addicted, so I can do it. I can, I can do heroin recreationally, and I can smoke crack rec rec recreationally, because that's not my personality to get addicted, right? That's essentially what she's saying. Right? She's saying that, and then she uses it, and then, and then she's saying that, oh, no, no, I was lied to. Somebody told me that, that, uh, that I found out later, oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. Oh, I, I f wow, people die from this. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same thing, right? It's bad judgment. But what you had grown up with. You, well, I you think know. what we found. And it's okay to have bad judgment. That's the other thing. It's okay to have bad judgment at that time. But you have to fess up and say, I fucked up, right? I made a mistake. And I supported the, you know, this, this uh, bogus war in Iraq. Uh, when millions of my people were home protesting and fighting, fighting to stop it, I got on a plane and went and did it. You gotta fess up, Tulsi. I mean, like so many people, we were there uh, to serve our country and, and believing the lie that right. we were all told that, hey, we've gotta go to Iraq and topple Saddam Hussein, this brutal dictator, because he's working with Al Qaeda and they've got weapons of mass destruction and they're gonna use them to attack us. So she not only believed the, she believed the lie of weapons of mass destruction, but she believed Bush and Bush and Cheney saying that Al Qaeda was in Iraq and they were responsible for 9 11. That they're in Iraq, and that's one of the reasons why we should go to Iraq. Because not only does he have weapons of mass destruction, but we got to get those Al Qaeda because she already said it that she was she had a she had a thing for the people that knocked down 9 11, that, that executed 9 11. She believed it was Al Qaeda from 2001. Now, 2005, Bush and Cheney commingled that idea with weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And she bought the whole thing. She swallowed the hook, the line, and the sinker. I mean, that's the mission and the mindset that we went there uh, believing. Mm -hmm. like, again, like so many politicians in Washington, so many people in the country, right. uh, only to really realize that we were, we were lied to uh, and that we were betrayed. This really wasn't about going after Al-Qaeda. Millions of people, Tulsi, millions of people knew it. You didn't know it. Right? You didn't know it. This wasn't about fulfilling that mission of protecting the American people at all. It was a regime change war that was launched under the guise of, of national security, under the guise of humanitarianism. And look at all these atrocities that right. this brutal dictator has done to his own people. Right. Uh, and done really for the benefit of, of corporate interests. Uh, and oil. And that was something, even while we were there, uh, was very eye opening to me coming from state government. You know, I'd left my re election campaign and my, my seat in the state house and going there and, and thinking about fiscal responsibility to taxpayers and seeing plastered all over our mm. camp 
This big emblem of KBR Halliburton. Oh, God, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw it, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, every outhouse <laughs> was, yeah, exactly. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we're from Hawaii. We have, like, very diverse, you know, we have people from across the Pacific, Filipino, Chinese, Vietnamese, all kinds of people in our unit. And we started making friends with the, uh-huh. the what were called the third country nationals that mm-hmm. were hired by KBR Halliburton to come and do things like clean the outhouses or cook the meals in the chow hall. And uh, so we'd start to make friends with them and talk with them and you know go outside behind the tent, start cooking rice and sharing food and uh, just start asking, hey, how much are you guys making? You know, How are you being treated? Oh, it was outrageous, it right? It was outrageous yeah, yeah. to see. I mean, hearing, oh, I get paid $500 a month. Wow. A month to work 12 hour days, six, seven days a week. How often do you get home to see your family? Maybe once a year, but probably every other year. Mm-hmm. And just knowing the billions, the billions of dollars these companies are making, and really to have this indentured servitude, it just it went to, well, this is the military industrial complex right. that they're really the ones who are profiting right. off of this war to the harm and destruction and loss of life of my brothers and sisters in uniform and the people of Iraq, the people who are waging this war. Okay, so there, there it is, right? She's... she's uh she tells you, she, she also sees the servitude. She sees the military industrial complex in action, right? No doubt. She sees the casualties of war, the death, the dying, the, the, uh, the slave labor, all perpetrated by the military industrial complex. She becomes aware of it. Now it's 2000, it's still 2005, right? So you would think like, okay, well, now you come back. And you go back to, you know, Hawaii and become a representative or whatever the hell you're doing. And then you, you're awakened to the fact, right? But no, she goes back in 2008 and 2009 to Kuwait as, a, as, a, as an enlisted individual. What are you talking about? Don't you walk away from it? Uh, you didn't learn anything. You went back for more. You went back for more. So... So that's, that's, um, that's Tulsi Gabbard's record. And, you know, this is a public service. Anybody who wants to watch this and say, oh, you're just bashing Tulsi because you don't like her, and you, you're a Bernie bro. You're a Bernie bro. No, it's not, that's not what's going on at all. You have to, just as Tulsi Gabbard was able to call out Camilla Harris on her record, we must, we must, we must analyze the judgment of the person seeking the highest office. Now, Tulsi Gabbard will not be the president of the United States. That isn't the argument here. Uh, but she is in a position now because now she got, she got uh, you know, cock-blocked out of the uh, debates, right? Why don't you drop out and, and get behind Bernie Sanders? Use your, use your voice to, to support someone who can win. Uh, that's what I'm saying, right? So is her judgment uh, changed? Now, that's strike one, right? The war thing is strike one. But there's also strike two, right? So now the anti-BDS movement. She's pro-Israel. She's, she's very, very supportive. Uh, you, you don't want interventionist wars all over the world, but you support Israel's occupation of Palestine, right? You say you don't, but when, when push comes to shove and a piece of legislation floats across the Congress, you sign it. You sign the BDS, the anti-BDS legislation that prevents, that, that stands in opposition of people's right to boycott, divest, and sanction Israel for their occupation of, of, of Palestine. Right? And here's how she, not that she, she's not going to acknowledge it, because when she was called out on it, here's how she responded. have sent me messages uh, and posted on social media asking for more information about why I voted the way I did on a recent resolution talking about BDS. So I wanted to uh, give you some background. Is there a crackle? And talk to you about uh, my commitment to defending our First Amendment rights. Nothing is more fundamental to the identity of our country than the rights and freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution. Now, I've fought to defend these freedoms, both as a soldier and a congresswoman, and It's why we'll continue to oppose unconstitutional legislation like S-1, a bill that does seek to restrict freedom of speech by imposing legal penalties against those who participate. Okay, so she she goes on in this rant. I don't even want to play it because she goes on in this rant to defend her her choice 
to vote for the anti-BDS BDS legislation. It is a mistake. You stand in opposition of it. That's precisely, that's the same sort of judgment that she used in Iraq. She's, she, she believes it. She believes when you read the anti-BDS legislation, any, any, I don't know, ninth grade or 10th grade would read it and realize that this is not in the best interest of the Palestinian people. And this is so pro-Israel, so pro-foreign country that it's unbelievable that it's even in Congress, right? So that's strike two. So, so she stands with Israel. She stands, you know, so Marcus Conti reporting on Tulsi Gabbard. Tul- Tulsi Gabbard, time to drop out. Drop out of the race. All right. Support Bernie Sanders. Get behind the candidate that could possibly win. All right. you, get, you get a cabinet seat out of the deal. Bernie Sanders runs, runs, gets, becomes the front runner. He can, if they you help, you call out the corruption, the cheating. You know the cheating better than anybody else. You know the cheating that's going on in the DNC. Use your, your, your power of, of uh, judging, <laughs> your lack of judgment, or your power to call out others' bad judgment and call out the election fraud where Bernie Sanders refuses to. Right? And elevate Bernie Sanders to the front, knock out Joe Biden's shit sandwich, and get, and get um, uh, Elizabeth Warren to be the vice president. There you got a winning team. You as the Secretary of State, right? That's, that's my opinion of it. So, so Mark Scott reporting on this. Uh, <laughs> again, it's not a hit piece. It's not a hit piece. All the, burn, all the Tulsi Gabbard people are going to line up and say, oh, Conti, you're just, you're just bashing Tulsi because you like Bernie. No, it, I do like Bernie, but I think that it, in light of this, this poor judgment, right, we have to be held accountable for our judgments, right? And if you make a mistake, you have to promptly admit it. When wrong, promptly admit it. Tulsi Gabbard has not, has not fessed up, and that, that is a problem. Marcus Conti reporting.